Hey guys, Mark here from Hijinx RC. What I'm going to do today is show you how I upgraded my stock Traxxas X-Max 8S fan system for the cooling of the motor from the stock to these wild turbo fans. I went ahead and I bought these fans uh, off of wildturbofan.com and the reason why I bought them is they put out almost uh, at least a third more air through these fans than what you're going to see with the stock Traxxas fans. The, uh, the, the catch here is that they advertise these on their website in terms of millimeters for the size and the size is 30 by 30 by 10. That's what they're saying that these fans are um, on the website and they probably are it's the way that they're measuring them but when you look at these fans they are 30 by 30 by 15 on the outside and the 30 is from the inside of the fan is where they're measuring it but these do fit and they're the same size as the stock fans but you have to do some modification and you also have to plug them into your receiver a little bit differently and i'll show you how i did that so now when you're replacing these fans, you have to realize that the direction of the fan is spinning this way. And what it's doing is it's blowing air from this direction. You, you may want to put these in that way so that you get some good surface area to uh, secure the fans to this uh, the, the shroud. But you have to put them in like this. And this causes a little bit of a problem because of the height of the fan when you go to set this back on the motor, the cooling fin of the motor, it, it, there's not enough room. You really can't even get the four screws back into the, uh, the aluminum uh, cooling fins. So I'll show you what I did in regards to these fans to make them fit in this shroud and then on the, uh, on the cooling fins themselves. Okay, so here's where it might get a little complicated for some folks out there. So you've got to be willing to actually do a little bit of work on your RC if you want these to work. And again, these are going to put off quite a bit of air moving over the, uh, over the motor when you're running your truck as compared to the stock, uh, stock fans. So what you need for this portion of installing the fan is you're going to need a Dremel tool with a normal cutoff, uh, cutoff wheel. And then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cut a portion of the plastic off of this fan to make it a true 10 millimeters so that it will fit into the shroud and not interfere uh, with the uh, cooling fins that are on the, um, uh, on, that's on the motor itself. So I'm going to show you exactly where we cut the, um, uh, th this fan. I'm looking for something I can point with here. All right, I'm just going to grab a... Grab a screwdriver here or something. Okay, well, the screwdriver is hiding on me, so I did find it. So I'm going to show you here exactly where uh, where I cut this fan to get it down to uh, the 10 millimeters. And it's kind of a, almost got a guide for you right here. So with this Dremel tool, with this wheel, I'm cutting in this area here. And I'm going all the way around the entire fan. So I'm cutting over here. And I'm just following this as a line. So it's really pretty simple to cut. You just have to be very careful when you're going through this, this, uh, this portion of the fan. You don't want to damage, obviously, any of the blades that are on here. And as you cut through here, basically, it's right above these fan blades. If you went too far through, you would actually hit part of the fan. So you guys got to be very careful and take your time when you're cutting. So just following this line right here is going to allow you to get this cut down to the size that you need to fit in the shroud. And I'll show you the finished uh, finished cut here in a second. But just be careful when you're cutting here. And once you get that cut, I clean up the edges and I'll show you that again here too in a second. Okay, so here is the finished cut. As you can see, here's the, here's the stock. can't see that good but you can see it this way you can see this this is the stock fan and this is the one after it's been cut get a little closer look for you all right and then all I did was I took a uh, exacto blade and I went ahead and I just cleaned up on the inside of the fan and then of course on the outside too just so that nothing's 
nothing's going to fall off and it's nice and nice and clean but that is what I did to get this fan the size that we need to fit in the shroud so when you take the fan and remember the air is coming from this side so it's going to have to sit yeah that's right it's going to have to sit in here just like that and then you can see it's nice and nice and just if it's flush a little bit sits a little bit lower and I'll take one of these fans and this is the stock fan I'll throw it in here and you can see how much higher it is than the one that's been cut down okay so that's going to give you the clearance that you need when you put this back on and you can screw this back into the uh, the, the, the cooling fins that are on the motor and I'll show you that here in a little bit too
Okay, before I forget, I want to make sure I point this out that with this uh, this uh, fan housing here, what I ended up doing was uh, there's there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight uh, uh, pins that hold the stock fan in. They're not going to work with these fans. They're in the way. So all I did was I took some snips and I snipped off all of them, all eight of them. And then I, I ground them down a little bit just to make them as flush as possible. Um, but I took those off and I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. So when I do go ahead and I put these fans in here, um, they're going to, they're going to fit nice in there. And what's nice about it when you cut those fans down is the actual, uh, keepers here from the stock fan will then also keep the fans in place. And I'll show you that here in a second. All right. So here are the fans, uh, installed. And as you, well, you may not be able to see, but, um, right here, these guys, there's one here, one on this side, one right here, and one on that side, and those are keeping the fans in place, so they're not they're not falling out of there, which is which is nice. What I'm gonna think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hot glue these two together down the seam just to kind of keep them in there a little bit better together, and uh, that should uh, that should do it. But I'll hot glue them together, and then I'll show you guys the uh, the wiring wiring part of it too. Okay, one more thing I wanted to mention too is I decided I wanted to use the harness for the fans that came with the uh, with the truck because of the length of this harness. But what I had to do, and because of the polarity of the fans, was I had to take the end of the harness here that plugs into the receiver, and I had to change the two wires around. Normally your red one is here in the middle and the black is on the outside. And these are easy enough to do just by lifting up on the tabs and pulling them out. But what I did was I just moved the red to the outside, the black, the negative to the inside. And when you plug it into the receiver, that uh, operates those fans. So I figured I'd just point that out. That's just something else I did in order to use this harness that came with the truck. All right. So just to get the proper voltage for these uh, two fans, uh, I plugged the, uh, the end of the harness into channel 4 on this receiver. See it there? Channel 4. And then now, uh, once I power it up, you'll hear the fans. 